of the day. That's Deputy Neil Smith. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, thank you for coming today and thank you to the last Corla for selecting this very important topic for topical issues today. And I want to speak to you today about the public consultation that is currently underway on the route corridor options for the N2 Clontibre to the border and N2 Ardeed Casablaney Road schemes. Um, and Minister, it would be important that before I set out my argument which you hear today, and I, I, I don't mean to make that sound a, a negative, it is very important. I'm here today to speak on behalf of the residents of Dunamine. And it, they, along with everybody else along this route, are acutely aware of the importance of saving lives and that there is no adversity to that ideology. That is of utmost importance. But by the same token, we must take into account and consideration people who are going to be most affected by such a project. And this particular project is um, a project that has been rolled out by Monaghan County Council in, in partnership with Louth County Council in association with the TII to develop a scheme to upgrade a 32-kilometre section of the N2 A5 Dublin to Derry Road. We all acknowledge the fact that it's a scheme that's long overdue, m much uh, wanted and desired. But again, I I'd say to you, Minister, that I'm here today in front of you on behalf of the residents in Dunamine, who are very concerned about this, the, particularly the section between the RD to Casablaney, which involves changes to the existing road. There's so much concern, I suppose it's important to say that these people, um, and I suppose it's bums on seats, which makes us acutely aware of the concern, the frustration, the worry among uh, residents. And you're talking about Dunamoyne, which is a country rural part of County, South County Monaghan, but hundreds have literally turned out for the public meetings. And there's been over 800 submissions, I understand, in relation to the public consultation submissions that are invited by the local authorities. So people are certainly talking, uh, not just talking, they're writing, they're putting in the submissions and of course bums on seats at two public meetings with hundreds turning out for it um, obviously tells you the temperature and the gauge of where people are at with this. But their concerns I would say are very well founded and they're concerned about the environmental impact as a result of any new route. And as I said it is important to say that of course road safety trumps everything but we also have to take into consideration where residents are at that and how they will be affected and, and some will feel they're going to be adversely affected. There is a ground well of support in terms of wanting clear transparency from the TII on the issue. Derek Maguire has been uh, very active in chairing these public meetings where he has brought some clarity to what the issues are for the local community minister. So that's why I'm delighted that you specifically are here today as Minister for Transport to hear what those concerns are. They feel that there's questions to be answered and questions to be answered by the TA. I suppose residents feel that they need transparency on each of the route options. There's a number of options being pro 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 proposed and they want transparency on how what options are selected, how they're being selected. They want to know the process that is being, um, the submissions are being received through by the local authority and what process they will go through in terms of selecting a final option. Monaghan County Council have appointed a consultancy firm in advance of this project to put it through the planning and design stage and residents want to know who will actually be in control of the CPOs uh, that will affect a new route. In the event of a new ro road being established, will the government and the Transport Department and provide the funds necessary to Monaghan County Council to maintain the original road, which is the N2, and the new road included, or is it just going to be forgotten about and let fall into disrepair? Because there's this real concern there, uh, the, speeding of tracks, um, the speeding of traffic and, of course, fatalities on that road. And they want to know that there will still be an acute guard the presence and speed cameras on that route as well. I suppose, Minister, I'll stop at that and allow you to answer some of those um, concerns, Blade. Thank you very much indeed, and I'd like to thank Deputy Smith for uh, bringing this very important question, which I know is of concern to her and our residents in her constituency. And I will uh, I just point out one or two things you, you are asking me are really not in my area, but I'll convey, the, can, can convey them to the right area. You're talking about uh, a guard of presence in, 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 in certain areas. I know they're concerns. They're not something of, of which I'd have control or any of my agencies would have control either. But it's, it's quite appropriate you should raise them and I can refer them to the appropriate quarters. I'd like to explain that as Minister for Transport, Tourism and Sport, I have responsibility for overall policy and funding in relation to the National Roads Programme. Under the Roads Act 1993 to 2015, 
The planning, design and operation of individual roads is a matter for the relevant road authority in relation to local and regional roads or for Transport Infrastructure Ireland in conjunction with the local authorities concerned in relation to national roads. Within the overall context of Project Ireland 2040, the National Development Plan has been developed by Government to underpin the successful impl implementation of the new national planning framework. This provides the strategic and financial framework for TII's National Roads Programme for the period from 2018 to 2027. In the years covered by the plan, over 11 billion will be invested in the overall, overall road net network. The NDP identifies two categories of national road improvement project. The first category covers projects to advance to construction, subject to the satisfactory outcome of the project appraisal and development consent approval processes. The second category relates to projects at pre-appraisal and early planning stage, which are being assessed with a view to developing a pipeline of suitable projects for development. Both the NTRD to Castle Blaney and N2 Clontibret to the border schemes fall into the second category of projects at pre-appraisal. Both schemes are located on a trans-European network route. The schemes will improve the regional connectivity to the northwest, which is a strategic priority of the national planning framework, as part of Project Island 2040. Both projects have had project appraisal plans submitted by TII and approved by my department. And I understand from TII that technical advisors have been appointed to provide the engineering consultancy services to develop the proposed schemes from, from inception to the preparation of compulsory purchase orders, environmental impact assessment report and business case in order to seek approval to proceed with making a planning application. The conclusion of this work will allow project requirements to be established and identify the financial commitment required to develop these major projects. The study area identification of both projects has been completed and the non-statutory public consultation on constraints mapping was carried out in June 2019. Route corridor options were published in October 2019 and as the deputy knows, public consultation is underway for both schemes. Feedback received through the public consultation process in the next stage of the planning and design process will be taken into consideration for each scheme. An emerging preferred route corridor will be identified in late 2020 and a further round of public consultation will take place before the preferred route corridor is finalised. I'm told that TII have provided an allocation of one million euros to Monaghan County Council this year for the progression of the N2 RD to Castle Blaney and a further one million to Monaghan County Council for the Clontibret to the border scheme. Thank you, Minister. Deputy Smith. Again, going back to the residents of Dunamine who have raised these concerns from my office, um, they would like to know what research has been taken on by the TI or will be taken on forthcoming from the um, submissions that are made to upgrade the existing N2 and make safer for, for residents. That's one of the concerns they have. They've also said to move the N2 away from Cartmacross Macross and surrounding area will obviously have a detrimental impact on local businesses' employment. And what's the economic impact on Cart Macross that's been considered? Or does that come into any of the criteria for the TII when they are actually coming down to nailing down what the route will be? I suppose, Minister, these residents are very reasonable people and we talk about, I suppose, climate action and you know, climate change. They're concerned about the environmental impact this would have to take a new route through their fields, through their farms, through their homes. What will the environmental impact be? What will the impact be on the hedgerows? What will the impact be on the biodiversity? What will the impact be on the natural heritage uh, of Dunamine that will adversely affect the residents living in that area? What consideration does the TII give to those neg possible negative outcomes? There's a real concern that a new route will affect negatively affect the drinking water in the area and the quality of it through public schemes and also the private wells. There's a concern for the wildlife and the importance in terms of the criteria and they want to know the importance of that uh, where the TII sit. Do they take those kind of things into consideration? We do hear a lot from government uh, about climate action, as I said, and about healthy living. And ultimately, the residents of Dunamine feel that they have more to lose than to gain if the proposed route was to cut through their farms, their lands and their homes. How is constructing a new road in line with Ireland's sustainable development goals such as climate control and CO2 emissions, Minister? And I just want to make it very clear to you today, 
They are concerned, and rightly so, from some of the points I've raised here with you today. And I suppose they'd like assurances from you today that all of the things I've mentioned, the environmental impact, the drinking water, the uh, natural heritage of the land and the landscape, is something that the TII will most certainly take into consideration when they are trying to nail down their final option. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't uh, disagree with anything that the deputy had to say, but obviously she doesn't expect me to interfere in a specific case of this, of this sort, and, and I wouldn't be doing so. I'm responsible for overall government policy, and if there are infringements of overall government policy and what's happening. The residents have great concerns about, about, about that, and they can certainly uh, convey them to me through you, and I'm very happy to listen to them. On the whole, what you've said, I think it's fair saying, uh, when you talk about uh, the quality of the drinking water, you talk about the detrimental impact on local businesses, you talk on the research, the upgrade done by the TII, and you refer quite correctly to the TII and the local authorities in what you're saying. These are all matters for them. Uh, they're all matters which could use usefully be addressed to them, but not something in which I would get directly involved. And I think I've put that in the in the preface to what I had to say. What I can say to the deputy, she, I suppose she's lucky in one sense, I know people are impatient about the development of roads of this sort, but the, this is at an early stage of development, this particular uh, project. And it's not therefore possible for me to indicate the time frame for the construction of the projects, which will of course be dependent upon the satisfactory conclusion of the statutory planning process, approval process. The schemes will need to obtain both business case approval and planning consent and will be subject to the availability of funding in the future. All the concerns which she addressed, I think, have, uh, have been raised in a timely fashion and can be raised, uh, uh, and it's not too late in a sense to raise them. I think they should, though, be, ad be addressed to the TII and not to myself or to, other, or to other authorities. It's appropriate that she should raise it in this House, and I'll make sure that they are conveyed onto the appropriate authorities, even though I'm unable, obviously, to give a a direct response to the, the, the rather lengthy detail which, which she's given, but I'll make sure that they go to the right places. The Select Committee on Foreign Affairs and Trade. And